Well, hello and welcome to The Big Picture here on RCTV. My name is Kevin Dent, and I am the host of The Big Picture, and we talk sports on The Big Picture. And I'm real excited because guess what's coming, guys? Baseball season. This means spring's coming. Spring is coming, baseball is coming, and we're going to talk some Red Sox here in the big picture tonight. And I have with me two guests this evening. I have Steve Crook, Redding's largest and most excited baseball <laughs> fan. And I have Nick Face the, uh, uh, from Sports Zone one-on-one with me. Thank and you. we're going to talk some Red Sox, and we're going to get right into it because I, I, I have to be honest with you, I am pretty excited about this team, but I yep. do have some questions about this team also. Yeah, and so we're going to start talking about the most important thing, which was the biggest failure of the team last year, sure. and that is the pitching staff. And so we're going to start with you, Nick. Do you okay. think the pitching staff is better this year than it was last year? Well, we know we have an ace. That's yeah, well, David that's, Price. Yeah. That, that's one check mark <laughs> listed right there. But besides David Price, we have a big problem. He can only take the ball every five days. Right. Yeah. It's the other guys to get there. That are my biggest question marks and so concern right so now. So let's walk down our our, our starting I'd love five. To. Uh, so we got David Price, at number one, and I think we can probably agree that David Price is is a, an upgrade over. Yes, I don't Mr. even know. Durable, who the, I would hope. I don't even know yeah. who the number one pitcher was last year, but whoever he was last mm-hmm. year, David Price is an upgrade. Yep. All right, uh, number two is probably Buck Holtz, right? Number th- probably, probably, but they're going to have to count on him at the beginning of the year to be two. They don't right. have a choice, yeah. right? Because yeah. I think you're going to lead to the next one. Number three is going to be uh, Eduardo Rodriguez. Yeah. All right, yep. Um, yep. and so he and he may be a number two, maybe a number three. We're not really sure. Yep. Yep. Okay, but uh, so number three and the number four and five are going to be some combination of Porcello, Kelly, and Stephen Wright probably to begin the season. Correct. So yep. the question is, is that better than the crew that we trotted out last year? And there's a lot of similar yep. names there. It would have to be. Certainly at number one. That I get a little worried at number two, and it goes downhill from there. Right. But. I mean, if we look at some of what has happened so far in the spring, Price has done well. Yes. Um, and uh, Kelly has done well. Stephen Kelly Wright has, has done, done well. as expected. You can keep it up. But uh, Porcello and uh, Buckholtz have been shaky. I'm most concerned, I'd say, in that rotation out of Porcello. Yeah. I still think that he could possibly be the big bust that mm-hmm. this team has on their roster right now. Could okay. be one of them. They okay. have a couple that could be there. But Porcillo in this market, I don't see him being as advertised and okay. what they were hoping for. Right. He's always been around that 500 type of pitcher mm-hmm. anyway. Mm-hmm. I think they threw too many dollars at him and got a little too nervous mm-hmm. about fulfilling that rotation. Yeah, and he pitched some, with some yeah. pretty good teams in Detroit, too. He did. So he should have done better. Yeah, and he's never given me a warm feeling. I still yeah. don't have a warm feeling about yeah. him. It's Yeah. So I mean, it's it's kind of a question mark there with Porcello. What about uh, Joe Kelly? I am going. I'm going to go out on a limb here and say Kelly's going to have a much better year this year. Okay. I like what I see from what he's done in the spring. It's spring. I understand yep, right. that. But one of the things that I see of difference from Kelly in the spring is his execution of his off-speed pitches. Mm. I like the mix. I think he's realizing that blowing a 98-mile-an-hour flat fastball is not going <laughs> to cut it anymore. Yeah. Certainly so, in the majors, anybody can no. catch up with that. I also think going down to the minors was a wake-up call for him last year. Yeah. He did get hurt towards the uh, end of the season last right. year, but I, I think I like taking – a chapter out of the book with Joe Kelly and saying he's going to yeah. be okay. So, Steve, the question with Buckholz has always been endurance. Can he last the whole season? What do you think? Do you predict that <laughs> no, Buckholz? Sooner or later, he's going to crash and burn. Yeah, and it seems um, like whether it's his body type or – And you also you never know whether you get good Buckholz or bad Buckholz. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, two, so, two seasons it, ago, he was right. you know the, the best pitcher in the American League until he got injured right before yeah. the All-Star I mean, when he's game. on his game. Or three he seasons could be one around. of the better pitchers in the yeah. league. But the one thing about Buckholz that you can pretty much guarantee is a DL stint for yeah. three months yeah. of the season. So if you're the manager of the Red Sox, how do you manage that? Well, it depends on who the manager is going to be as well. <laughs> <Yeah>. so, <laughs> are you counting Farrell or are yeah. you counting well, Lavuo? Well, John Farrell, Farrell is supposed to be a pitching guru. I mean, he came here mm-hmm. and he kind of uh, – you know, righted Stephen uh, Stephen Lester, John Lester. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and led us to the World Series because of that. So he's supposed to be that pitching guru. Can, does can he manage innings and that kind of thing for Buckholtz? Well, well, we'll find out, won't we? Um, We're gonna have to. Um, so I'm, I'm a lot of tepidness here about yeah, Buckholtz. I'm not counting on it. <laughs> not counting I'm on not Buckholtz. counting on it. I think this is his final year. I think. He had an option that the Red Sox picked up. It's a, it was a good option because yeah. it's not breaking the bank. I think picking up the option was the right thing to do. It was pretty much do. a no-brainer. It, you know, it's whenever you pick up an option, it's always kind of a, a judgment call. It's yep. kind of a kind of a fly in the dark, you know, kind of gamble. And I think it was probably the right gamble to make. I do think, and I hate to agree with Felger and Maserati on the radio. <laughs> I hate doing it a lot, but for some reason, Felger keeps looking at Buckholz as being like a sickly. 
type of person. He mm. doesn't look well. He's always yeah. not too heavy. You know, right. he's kind of yeah. lean and right. he's got the droopy hair and <laughs> doesn't really look the part of a big league pitcher. Yeah. I think that might be along the lines of probably why he hasn't been a 200 inning you know, a year pitcher. Mm. I don't, he doesn't so, so kind of look saying, at the part. What you're saying is he needs a new hairdo. <laughs> or maybe <laughs> more bullfrog yeah. to yeah. go along with helping get the good texture of the baseball might help yeah. too. Yeah. So yeah. Um, <laughs> we'll have to see what uh, about Buck Holtz. I, I wouldn't throw it right. uh, out there and saying he'll have a right. 200 inning. It's never happened. I, I think that it's going to be pretty likely whether it's Edward, the loss of Rodriguez at the beginning of the season, which we know about now, as well as the likelihood the Buck Holtz is going to not make it to the season, that Stephen Wright is going to be playing a significant role on this team. I, He's going like to probably Stephen start Wright. on the, yeah. in the starting staff and then probably go to the bullpen afterwards. Yep. But I kind of like him. Who who can't like a knuckleballer? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Who can't? I mean, we've had a lot of success here with the we knuckleball have. in the past 20 years. you got a guy who can eat up a lot of innings in the middle of a game when you need it. And- yep. And knuckleballers are never out of it. You know, no, it seems not, like no. a knuckleballer can turn it around in the middle of a game if they're going badly. Yep. Of course, the reverse can happen also. Yep. They can be doing great, and it totally falls apart on them yes, in the middle you, of the yep. game also. So it's kind of, you know, knuckleball pitches are always 500 pitches. But if you're talking about your six, your number six starter, yep. 500 is okay with me. I'll take that. I'll, I'll take, take Stephen yeah. Wright at yeah. six. Yeah. Um, can we go back to Ed- Eduardo Rodriguez sure. for a second? I'm concerned on this injury that happened mm-hmm. in spring training. I guess mm-hmm. he slipped over a baseball. Yeah, is something that what like it was? That, yeah. Strain, he strained his leg or something For like that. For whatever reason, I don't know if they're holding him back and babying him too much. Mm. I think he'd be okay to pitch, but maybe they're not wanting to gamble yeah. and throw him out there. I think he's a young pitcher, and he doesn't have a lot of innings under his belt. And if they lose him, yeah. they'd rather lose him for two weeks at the beginning of the right. season than lose him for the whole season. Yeah, you don't want to press your luck, and then you lose him, like you say, for the exactly. rest. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. But I think you hit it right there is since he's so young, it would be probably be in the best sense to hold him back at the beginning yeah. of the year. Keep his innings count down. I also think that they look at him as being similar to a potential future number one, a number eight, you know, a future ace. Mm-hmm. You know, he, they think that he has that kind of stuff. And why ruin that on the first two or three you weeks can't. of this season? You, you can't. Know? Wait till Buckholz goes out and then slot. You're going to have to. All right, we need to move on or we're going to run out of time here sure. in the first okay. half. Um, but uh, – Quickly on the pitching stuff, we don't want to leave out the, the bullpen. I think the bullpen is better this year without getting into the specifics. Yes. I think the bullpen is much better this year uh, than it was last year, and we've seen in previous years. And, and some of the additions there, even if you lose uh, Koji or Howard, you've got backups all yeah. there. And so I, I, that's my opinion. I, just quickly, uh, anything definitely. on the bullpen? We agree. Okay, yeah. we're going to move on. We like the bullpen. Uh, there's lots of interesting yeah. things happening with the with – the, uh, uh, guys uh, on the field most of the time as well. Um, and one of the experiments, quote-unquote, mm-hmm. this year is a uh, change of an experiment from last year, sure. <laughs> which is Hanley Ramirez. Hanley Ramirez uh, was in left field last yep. year because they didn't have any place to put him. They said, no, 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 we're going to start him at first base. Steve, is this going to work? Well, what genius first thought you'd take an infielder, put him out in left field in Fenway Park? Are you kidding me? <laughs> he, did <Ben> <clears throat> oh. he did look lost out there. I mean, he, what, I, what I've seen him, I mean, he seems to be doing a good job there, stretching out, get, digging stuff out of the dirt, that yeah. kind of thing. Yeah. Yep. Some of the skill set for, for first base isn't dissimilar from shortstop where he played yeah. for his all. He wasn't sure. the greatest shortstop in the world, but he knows how to field a ball in the infield, number one. It, it may be one of your most important positions out there. Oh, yeah, absolutely. You, you get the ball. Yeah. Good well, amount of time. Yeah, think about you it. You have any, to need some skill. Any infield play, he's involved in it. Exactly. Somehow. I think the question for him is going to be the footwork around first base and learning yep. the footwork around first base. I don't have any issue with him being able to field the ball at first yep. because he was a shortstop. Right. And even though he wasn't a great shortstop, you know, you can have a very average shortstop be a great first baseman in you terms can. of fielding skills. But it's that it's that stretching for the for the badly thrown ball. Yep. It's that uh, knowing when to leave the bag and and when not to leave the bag to 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 prevent the error that gives the extra sure, base. Yeah. And it's the, just the footwork of getting his feet managed in the right – I'm moving my feet as I do this. Right. Getting yeah, his feet yeah. moved in the right place. I played some first base, so, yeah. um, you know, into the right position, you know, where, where you're supposed to. So I think uh, – my question is, is his bat worth this effort? Well, we'll, we'll see. And I think there's going to be times where he'll, he'll miss something and go, ah, you know. But right. it, it, give him time, and I, I think he ought to be able to grow into it. Going so back I'm, to the, I'm hopeful. Going back to that infield um, quality where he's going to be mm-hmm. in position, where he's going to be – the biggest person that's going to help him is going to be Pedroia. Yes. And I really believe that we've seen a better performance in the past mm-hmm. couple of weeks from him in the, in the at first base yep. from Pedroia. Yep. I think Pedroia kind of lit a fire under him a little sure. bit and said, mm-hmm. you're either going to get this done or you're going to sit on the bench. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And I know that happened because I was hearing from some of the media out there that Pedroia was not too happy with mm-hmm. what he yeah. was doing at the beginning. Yeah. 
So I, I'm looking at Pedroia to kind of be that spark for him. And hopefully he is. I mean, Pedroia certainly has the cachet to do that. Absolutely. Uh, the other big controversy that's happened in, uh, or I don't know if controversy is the right word, certainly the big thing that's been going on suddenly at third base. We thought third base was a set position for the Red Sox. All of a sudden we're hearing Dave Dombrowski say, you know, just because you get a big salary doesn't mean you make the team and, and are a starter. Um, and now we're hearing that, Travis Shaw could be pushing Pablo Sandoval out of his position. Shaw, right. who's hitting like 450 or something like that in spring yep. training, yep. and yep. has looked really good, uh, three or four home runs as well. What do you think, Pablo it, or Shaw? It, it's a tough choice. You've, you've got a rotund, lethargic animal where you got this guy's beating the stuffing out of the ball. <laughs> that doesn't seem like too tough a choice there, no, Steve. No, I, think I, know, I know where I stand on that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We're the most expensive bench holder downer in the entire baseball. What do you think about that? Big well, salary, I mean, SeaWorld just down. closed yeah. you know, Shamu yeah, yeah, yeah. out there. So, I mean, we can put one out there in the tank, and we can install one at third base. Wow. I mean, that's a no-brainer. Not feeling a lot of love for pa Pablo yeah. here. Yeah. When yeah. you show up to camp looking like that, I think you belong oh, in the my. waters. I, th yeah. I think there was some, some real discipline. May with the fact that Pablo showed up way out of shape. And, and uh, you know, if he had showed up a little trimmer, I think his performance would be better. But yeah, also, sure. I think people would give him a little more benefit of the doubt. But sure. it doesn't seem as though he's getting a lot of benefit of the doubt. I, I have to be honest, every person I've talked to or texted about this issue yep. has said, give Shaw a chance, give Shaw a chance. And the only benefit I've chance. seen him get at all has been from uh, the, the team itself. It's, oh, well, we didn't really have him on a weight plan. And oh, well, we didn't. <laughs> it was really a back and forth. Yeah, yeah. Something, something yeah. stinks yeah. here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think the other question is: is if Pablo is on the bench, is he going to be of any value to no. the team whatsoever? No. He'll be a pinch hitter coming off the bench against nope. right-handers, but you know he's going to sulk if he's on the bench, and he's really going to be useless. And I think that's something you do he, have to take into consideration. He's a creature of habit, and notice how I said creature. Yeah. Um, he needs to have positive energy around him. Yeah. He's not a guy that's going to be built up and everything from yeah. people criticizing him. Yeah. So as much as the media and all of us want to criticize, we may need to say, you know what, yeah. we got to be positive here and get the best out of him. To be fair to Pablo, he's a career 288 hitter for something yeah. like that, but he has been on a downward trend over the last couple of years. Does, does it's a bad move when they did it. it yeah. yeah, I mean, at the time I liked it because they needed a third baseman. He was the best third baseman available. But I think, uh, well, what we didn't know was Donaldson was available. Yeah. <laughs> we had known Donaldson was available. But uh, anyway, we won't we, even, that was, we, that's last year's pre baseball preview. Can we trade him somewhere for, say, a bag of sunflower seeds or something? I don't something? think they'll yeah. give us that. I you think don't think we can get a bag of I think, uh, I think we're stuck penny. with them. I think we're stuck with them. <sighs> um, so we only have a minute or two left, but the other issue that came up uh, in my mind when talking about the Red Sox regular season, that's something kind of the Red Sox are depending on, is Xander Bogarts. Mm -hmm. Xander Bogarts had a breakout season last year. Yep. Uh, what did he hit? 320 mm -hmm. and like 80-something RBIs. That yep. shortstop was excellent. Played a very, very good defensive shortstop. Yep. Wasn't great, but very good. Yep. Can he repeat and have a great season again this year? Nick. What I what I like about Bogarts is his athleticism, his mm -hmm. ability to already f kind of show us that he can play in this market. Yeah. And I think because he's done that, I think we'll be able to see the consistency return for him. I actually see him doing even better this year. Okay. I see the power developing a little mm -hmm. bit. All right. I see the um, just his overall feel of the game. It's yeah. a challenge a little yeah. bit to get into the league as a rookie and kind sure. of feel it out and know sure. what you're doing. I see the same thing for, for Mookie Betts, too. Mookie and him will mm -hmm. have a great season. I have no doubts about yeah. Mookie. What do you yeah. think about Xander? I, I don't know. I hope so. I'm, I'm, I'm certainly rooting for him. It, I think yeah. that's where our salvation lies is in the kids. Yeah, it, I mean, his his, his, uh, his home run numbers are down last year, yep. but uh, also his strikeouts were way down last year, and yep. his batting average, of course, was was much higher. So, you know, I, I don't care if the shortstop hits 20 or 25 home mm -hmm. runs. I really don't. We don't need him to do that. If he hits a dozen, yep. which he hit nine last year, so if he hits a dozen, you know, and hits in the 300, range, yep. you know, which would be a little lower than last year, but but that would be terrific. If he hits 300 and 10 or 12 home runs, I think we're golden seal, at shortstop. Seal up that side of the infield. It, it would. absolutely would. With, you know, and then with, with your guy's guy, Travis yep. Shaw yep. over yep. there. Yep. Absolutely. You know, that, that would be a very decent offensive infield with Travis Shaw and uh, Xander Bogarts, Dustin Pedroia, and Hanley Ramirez. And That's, don't forget Brock Holt, guys. Yeah. Brock don't Holt. forget Brock Holt. Brock, Brock Holt. Star. The Brock Star, the, the everyman, he can, wherever you, can go you put anywhere him, he you plays. Need. Yeah, we didn't really talk about the outfield at all, yeah. and we're not going to have time to do that now because we are running up against the clock. At I this know. Moment. Okay. And so, Time's ticking. Yeah, the clock is ticking, and uh, we need to come back and uh, take a little break here. We're going to have some messages from a few of our friends here on the Big Picture. You have been watching the Big Picture on RCTV. We'll be back in just one moment. Hi, 
Hi, my name is Jean Baraski, member of the Reading School Committee, and you're watching RCTV. Well, hello, and welcome back to The Big Picture here on RCTV. I continue to be Kevin Bent, and I continue to be the host of The Big Picture. And well, now. I can now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Were you guys threatening me or something? <laughs> and I continue to have my two guests. This guy will never be here again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and Mr. Steve Crook. Uh, so we talked about the Sox in the first half. We talked about the Sox infield. We mm -hmm. talked about the Sox pitching. Uh, we talked about uh, uh, Xander Bogarts and some of the others. We yep. didn't really talk about the outfield a whole lot, uh, and we don't really have time for that. But... Um, I did just want to mention the outfield just in brief because we actually sure. in the break mm -hmm. talked a little bit about the outfield. Just your prediction: who's the who's your starting left fielder this year? I think center field and and right field are pretty much set. But who's your starting left fielder? Yeah, I'm, I'm looking at either Travis Shaw, Brock Holt, David Murphy, something yeah, in that some combo. Castillo's not going to make this team. He's in Pawtucket. Okay. Learn, learn to play. What do you think, Steve? Who's your starting outfield? Well, I'm starting left fielder. Shaw's at third base, but mm -hmm. okay, of course. So you know, at least so if Shaw's at third base, who's your starting left fielder? Ah, uh, yeah, I don't know. That, that's tough. Okay, I, I think that probably on opening day, uh, Brock Holt is your starting left fielder because they know him. Yep. I do think David Murphy makes this team as the fourth outfielder, yep. and I think you see him filter in, especially against a lot of right-handed pitching because sure. he just kills right-handed pitching um, in his career. We're going to move on. One of the things we like to do when we talk sports in the big pictures, I like to talk about things that aren't just dedicated to this mm -hmm. season. I sure. like to talk about some bigger historical kind of stuff because uh, it makes me remember a few things and that kind of thing. And one of the things yep. that happened in this offseason is that uh, the Red Sox announced that on May 26th, they're going to retire the number, number 26, of the venerable Wade Boggs. Mm -hmm. Chicken Wade, man. The chicken man. <laughs> Wade Boggs, who uh, had something of a checkered career in Boston, though I think a lot of that was media-driven and not necessarily mm -hmm. driven by him. Yeah. Um, I happen to be a big fan of Wade Boggs. So that kind of launched in my head the question of what are some of the other Red Sox numbers that sh they should retire? Because they used to have this rule that said they could, had to be on the team for 10 years, they had to yep. retire with the team, and they had mm -hmm. to be a member of Baseball Hall of Fame, and they've broken that rule. They've they broken that rule with Pedro Martinez. They broke that rule with now Wade Boggs. They broke that rule really with, with Carlton Fisk. They broke that rule with Johnny Pesky, who, by the way, yeah. you're wearing the Pesky shirt yes. tonight. Yep. Um, so, so they've broken that rule. So that rule sure. no longer applies. So now that we've opened this up, who else – deserves to have their number retired for the Boston Red Sox. Mr. Steve. It's, it's tempting to say Tony C. Yep. Okay, Tony C, number 25. Why would you say for, Tony for C? For what he could have been had he not yep. been, been hit that mm -hmm. in that August game there in 67. Yeah. I mean, he could have been amazing. Could have been amazing. It, could have been you know right up there with Yaz and Williams yeah. as one of the best Red Sox players sure. of all time. And can you imagine a team with a, a mature Tony C in 75? <laughs> You know, with Yaz, with mm -hmm. Rice, with mm -hmm. Lynn, you know, with Dewey Evans. I mean, that would have been a monster team, yep. um, you know, assuming he panned out the way we expected him to. Uh, you know, I think there's some question there about the fact that he didn't really put up the numbers. It would be more of the type of thing that someone who was injured on the yeah. field of yeah. play, who we respected as would have yeah. been something. So I think Tony C. is a legitimate answer. What do you I think, I was looking Nick? at Tony C. as well right there. However... I think it's Roger Clemens. Roger Clemens, Roger, number 21. Roger Clemens may be mm -hmm. the next one that's the out there. Man. You may see that come together just because of his career he put in mm -hmm. with Boston. You know, I, I'm a big believer that the steroids kicked in in Toronto and yep. New York I think so when too. it began. Certainly, if he was doing steroids in his last couple of years in Boston, he wasn't doing it right. <laughs> uh, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, but I, I look at Clemens, and okay. I think eventually you probably will have to have that steroid era will probably be involved with that Hall of mm -hmm. Fame at some mm -hmm. point because how can you bypass yep. 10, 20 years basically of – baseball history. Right. That's a whole different discussion, but I agree with you on that. Eventually, yeah. you're just going to have to say the steroid era, era was what it was, and these are the best You're going to just have to deal with it. And if, and if you deal with that, he was one of the top one or two pitchers of that era. And I, and I would have five years ago would have said no way, and I wouldn't give a rat's, yep. you know. But <laughs> I, I've softened on the guy yeah. as time has come to really come to respect what he did in the yeah. day. And yeah, and I think you have to remember that, that what he did as a Red Sox player was pretty significant. He had three yeah. Cy Youngs yep. and uh, you know did lead the Red Sox to a couple yep. of di three division titles and sure. uh, one World Series. And, and, of course, he had the two 20-strikeout games. I mean, yep. he had a lot going for him. He is the, the, the Red Sox, tied for the Red Sox leader in wins mm -hmm. with yep. Cy Young. Um, so, I mean, there's a lot to say about Roger Clemens. Mine, or sorry, go ahead, you have one more. I was going to say, going with the Johnny Pesky route a little bit, uh -huh. Tim Wakefield. Yeah. Tim Wakefield had a wonderful career here in Boston. Yep. Might not be Hall of Fame worthy, but from contributor to great citizen to person that just did everything that he could. Yeah. Did, did what needed to be done. Did what he Where it needed to be done. 
when it needed to be absolutely done. Be taken Never off complained. the playoff roster. When Every, exactly. Yeah. No team what. team guy, one of the yep. best you'll find. Was a closer, was a reliever, was yep. a sure. starter. If he Mop hadn't, guy, if he hadn't been matter. willing to give up and go to the bullpen, he yep. would be the Red Sox career leader and win. Sure. He only missed it by a couple anyway. Yeah, sure would. You figure if he got four or five more wins in that time period when he was in the bullpen. They say you can't find a more classy guy yep. than Tim yep. Wakefield, and that right there alone would mm-hmm. most likely see his And in his fact, he's continued on as the head of the uh, Red Sox Foundation, so he's exactly. continuing yep. to do charitable work exactly. in Boston. Mine is Dewey Evans. Okay. Uh, Dewey, Dewey Evans is probably my favorite Red Sox player of yep. all time, and I played with the team for 19 years um, and uh, you know, patrolled right field. He had seven or eight gold gloves in right field, kind of remade himself in the second half of his mm-hmm. career. He wasn't a, a, a schlep on offense uh, in the first half of his career, but in the second half of his career, he really kind of turned it on on offense. Sure. A lot of people don't know this stat about him, but he actually led the American League in home runs during the 1980s. There wasn't a single American leaguer that had more home runs than Dewey Evans in the 1980s than Dewey Evans. Mm-hmm. And uh, and he was a Red Sox for all but one yep. year of that. He left and went yep. to Baltimore one year at the end of his career. Is he going to make the Baseball Hall of Fame? I think he should, but he probably will not. Yep. Uh, maybe on the veteran Veterans Committee someday, but I think the Red Sox had to do the right thing and yeah, retire number twenty four. Tony, Tony, I'd put him up there too, as I'll often say at games. I go, Dewey would have had him. Dewey yeah. would have had that one. How many <laughs> times do you say how that? Far out of what? You see Dewey a play in the in right field, field and like you go, Dewey would have had that one. Yep. <laughs> you know, but, and, and oh. he had a laser arm too. Oh, I mean, he, he led the American League in in, um, in 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 assists from the outfield for like three or four seasons. And basically, you know, once he got into the late seventies, they stopped running on him. Yeah, right. And so he he was always underrated as a a right fielder this guy because they never ran yeah, on him absolutely. anymore. Uh, so that so I would pick Dewey Evans as my number one guy. Uh, interestingly, however, uh, he wore the number 24. After him, Manny Ramirez wore the number 24. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that would be interesting. And now they just gave number 24 to David Price. Yep. So they would have to take 24 away from David Price to they do would. Dewey Evans. So, so that's the one that I would have. Um, any other uh, honorable mentions quickly on that score? Any? Are you allowed to insert El Guapo? El Guapo. <laughs> just, just for a man who enjoyed life. I, I believe. enjoyed life to its fullest, <laughs> yep. whether he was relieving or whether he was with his family or whether he was cooking and eating. Yeah. I believe I mean, El Guapo's hap- number will get retired. He was just a happy man. With David Ortiz. With David Ortiz. Four. <laughs> there you go. Oh, there, we there, we go. there we go. And see? David Ortiz is 34. So eventually, Mr. Steve is going to go to the ballpark and he's going to look up and yep. he's going to see El Guapo's number El retired. <laughs> and my wife, my wife will be happy. She'll not tell Guapo. That's great. I, I forgot not about that. Lolly That's what I always, I always think about that when I go to Fenway because, you oh, know, look, Jackie. El Guapo's number is <laughs> up there in yeah. the room. Jackie Robbins is 42. And if you remember the last person to wear 42 for the Red Sox was Mo Vaughn. And so I'm always like, hey, Mo Vaughn's number is retired. Yeah, Mo Vaughn's up there. Just in the wrong color. <laughs> All right, we're going to move on from that. We want to talk a little bit more about the coming baseball season, but I love talking about numbers, and sometime we'll go back and go Red Sox players that are not in the Hall of Fame that sure. should be in the Hall of Fame, but that's not for today. Mm-hmm. I want to talk about the AL East. The AL East is a very sticky division this year. Uh, what are we thinking in terms of Ooh, predictions boy. on the AL East? Who comes in first? Who comes in last? Who comes in the middle? What are we thinking about the AL East this year? Maybe Who's Nick. getting it first? You go ahead, Nick. Oh, I'm going to get it first. <laughs> uh, I, I'm not looking at the Red Sox as being the number one team right now. Okay. I'm not. And the reason I'm doing that is because I think there's so many question marks Mm -hmm. right there. I think that you're going to see a much better Yankees team. Mm. Unfortunately, I am picking the Yankees as number one right here. It's because of that bullpen. I'm going to boo myself too. But I found that the more critical that I can be on the team, Mm -hmm. the better sometimes their season goes. So I'll pick the Yankees right now. And I'm also picking the Red Sox not to make the playoffs. I'll make it real bold. Okay. I'll make it real bold. I like the Orioles and what I see, what they've put together. I think everybody did get better in a way. Yep. But I'm going to go Yankees and Blue Jays as 1-2 in this division one, right two now. 1-2 Yankees, Blue Jays. Yes. Okay. All right. And so then you have uh, what? Uh, Red and Sox, again, I'm Baltimore. a Red Sox fan. Yeah, Red Sox, Baltimore, Tampa Bay. Is that the round up? Then I'll division? go Red Sox, Baltimore, Tampa Bay. Okay. Yes. T- Toronto I might buy. It, Sox ought to be able to make a wild card. I okay. don't see them winning the division. Mm-hmm. Um but it could be almost any of them. It, so who do you have winning the division then, do you think? And it could be any of them. I think that there's a lot of parity in the American League East sure right is. now. Who do you have winning maybe, the division? Maybe Toronto. Okay, so Toronto. Yeah. Yeah. So would you say Toronto, Boston? You said Boston will win the wild card. So Toronto, yeah. Boston, where do you go from there? New York, Baltimore, Tampa Bay? Is that New your? York, and it's, yeah, it's, it's kind of anybody's bet. Yeah. I think that if for the first time in a long time uh, – 88, 89 wins is going to win this division because I think they're all going to beat up on each other. They are. And so because of that, I don't see 
the wild card coming out of the American League East. Um, oh, I, I think that the Central Division is very strong. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think that Cleveland and the, your World Series defending champion, Kansas City Royals, as they're well as good. the Twinkies, they're, they've gotten better. I mean, I think this, the, the, the wild card team is going to come out of the Central So we may be year. saved from losing the wild card. So now. we may be saved from losing Whew. the wild card. Yeah. I mean, we, they have that fourth wild card, so we yeah. might make the one game and anything can happen in one game. Yeah, right. Um, I do not see the Red Sox winning the division either. I no. think Toronto wins the division. I think Toronto yep. has a has a chip on its shoulder because nobody's picking them. Yep. And so they're going to go out there, and I think they're going to go run wildfire. So I see Toronto, Sox, Yankees, sure. Baltimore, Tampa Bay. And, I, and let's be honest with the Jays from when they were mm -hmm. in the playoffs. David Price had nothing to do with that, really. No, no, nothing. Nothing. No. nothing. So this team, the, even though they lost Price, yeah. who cares? Yeah, they're still pretty good. <laughs> and I, I like Tampa Bay a lot on the pitching side. I think their mm -hmm. pitching staff is the best in the division. Yep. But they can't hit the ball. They can't. So, I mean, I really – and that's a problem. <laughs> yeah. You know, when every starter goes out there and feels as though he has to only allow, allow one run, mm -hmm, that's sure. going to be a real problem for Tampa Bay. So, so and at Baltimore, I think Baltimore is better. I really – you know, it would not surprise me if you have all five teams being in the 88 to 78 yeah. win range in the American League East. This, this year alone, I think, yeah. is – going to be very exciting to see yeah. play out. But I think a the, lot of question marks. But I think what's going to happen is in the central you're going to have two teams in the 90s in wins yep. and then, so that will lock the wild card, you know, out, out of out of the east. As long as we don't finish lower than third. Right. You know, yeah. I I've been getting is tired that what of we're settling though? Is that what we're settling for though right now? Uh, we've won one playoff series since 2010 here. Yeah. It's yeah. been six well, years since 2010. But, I mean, well, we, won the World Series. we won the World Series. In 2013. In 2013. Yeah. Well, but the that's other, the only year on we the made the playoffs hand, right yeah. now. Yeah, that's yeah. Yeah. I've seen them win the World Series three times in my lifetime. Yeah. True. <laughs> have been born, lived long, True. full lives, and died and never seen it's it It's because we're spoiled so, rotten Boston right. fans now. But I'm realistic when I say, you know, it... You know, third. Yeah, I wouldn't be happy about third, but yeah. it. I think know, in it, a tight division. I think it, it's going to be one or two wins between first and yep. third. You know, I really I, do. I, I, I think I totally agree. You could have eighty nine wins for the champion, eighty eight yeah. for the second place, eighty seven for the third. I mean, that, yeah. so you could be eighty seven wins and have a pretty decent season and be in third place. Yep. You yep. could be eighty nine wins, have a pretty decent season and be in first in this division. I really do, unless the unexpected takes takes place and then then who knows what's going to happen after that so uh we do have one quick uh, uh topic to get to we only got about a minute mm -hmm. or two left here i just want to hit the rest of the league just who is your division champion for each of the other divisions sure. okay so uh al central and al west starting nick who's your division a, a, champion? you gotta go with the royals you have royals, to look at the royals from, what, from yeah. what they yeah. from what they looked at from okay. back there and the al west i like the rangers okay i like the rangers so still out there and the rangers yeah. what do you think steve al central AL Central's got to be the Royals again. Okay, um, Royals again. And uh, what do you think about the AL West? Eee, it could be it's weaker Rangers, this year. Could be Houston. I, I would root for Seattle, but All right. Hey, I, I'm a realist. I, <laughs> I don't see it happening. And right. I think I think uh, Cleveland is first in the Central, and I think okay. that. Uh, but I think that Kansas City is a wild card team. Okay. And then I think that uh, Texas is excuse me not texas that houston astros are your winners yep. in the west and that texas is your wild card team i want to see more of that. the astros yeah. i want to see more of it i'd like yeah. to see Keuchel well. season a yeah. a yeah. fluke i want to see that we'll yeah. see what happens yeah. okay quickly again now national league east central and west national league you gotta look at the mets, mets. i love that mets pitching staff i agree. love it yep love it there i agree i think the mets are the uh, odds on champion and probably yep. odds on for repeating in the world series as well could be um and what about uh, the uh, nl central the, the team i'm looking at is the cubs Cubbies. I, you know, I, I know they so. say every year it's yeah. Cubs, 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 but yeah. Joe Madden's working some magic right yeah, now. I, I agree. Think. I agree with the Cubs C in the Cubs Central, Cubs Cardinals. Too. Yeah, well, I think Cardinals but, are your wild And they're all mad about no Donald no Trump Cubbies. right now, too, <laughs> yeah, so yeah, right. they have a little fire under them. And what about your NL West? I, I'm going to look at the Giants. Giants. I look at the Giants. Even your, even your Giants. I think the Giants were mad they didn't get there last year. Yeah. Look at the Giants. I disagree with you there. I think okay. the Dodgers in the you NL like the West. Dodgers? Like yeah, the Dodgers. I'm afraid it's the Dodgers. So okay. you think the Dodgers would, in, the, in the West? Yeah. What do you think they of the Central? Injury, though. You like the Cubbies yeah. in the Central? I love the Cubbies in the Central. And then you like the Mets in the East? I think the Mets, yep. Okay, well, there we go. Yeah, so. Uh, so those are our predictions, and we'll see what happens from there. We'll pull this tape up in September and October and see we'll how we wrong, did. Yeah. So we'll all be wrong. Good. All right, well, I'd like to thank uh, Mr. Steve Crook for being here with us today. I'd like to thank Mr. Nick You're Face welcome. of Sports Zone 1 on 1 for being with us today here on The Big Picture. And just as we close The Big Picture, the news came across the wire today that of the death of Joe Garagiola, yes. who was the oh, announcer for the yeah. uh, uh, several teams uh, over the years as well as a player uh, for the Dodgers. He was the announcer of yeah. – uh, this week in baseball in the in the eighties when I was a kid had the Saturdays. legendary nineteen seventy five call. Yes, he did, yep, yep. and he passed away today. And so, just uh, condolences to his family and to the baseball world for the loss of Joe Garagiola. My name is Kevin Vent. Thank you for watching the Big Picture here on RCTV.